So welcome, everybody. My name is David Liang. I'm a protocol specialist with Foundry Digital on our Foundry staking team. I really you know, want to thank everyone for joining us today. I really love having you know, a sort of small, intimate group where we can you know, maybe spend a little bit more time on you know, specific questions that I can help with. In terms of, you know, if I don't know, I can definitely note that down for us. It's provided with this really handy whiteboard, which I was not planning on using. And welcome, everybody. And, you know, I just want to give a big thanks uh, to the Horizon Labs uh, team, the Horizon Blockchain Foundation, and uh, the founders of Horizon Labs, Rob, Liat, and, and Dean, who we've been working very close with. Uh, and we'll you know, cover a little bit, as well as Foundry for giving me the opportunity both to present today and also giving me my break within this industry. Uh, so who is Foundry Digital? You know, we really, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, when we were a little bit smaller group, uh, we very much operate in stealth. Uh, but we were really created to meet institutional demand for better capital access, efficiency, and transparency for digital currency mining and staking. Uh, we are a digital currency group company, uh, so our wholly owned subsidiary sister companies include Coindesk, Genesis Global Trading, Luno, among hundreds of other portfolio companies. As a DCG portfolio company, we are the infrastructure arm, and we tap unparalleled expertise to provide global miners, stakers, and equipment manufacturers worldwide with the resources to build, maintain, and secure, reliable, decentralized infrastructure. Uh, to date, we have deployed over $400 million into decentralized infrastructure, both on the proof of work and proof of stake teams. Uh, beginning with proof of work in October of 2022 is a little bit of a backstory. Uh, our services include you know, our flagship service, which is our Foundry USA pool. It's the largest Bitcoin mining pool by hash rate. We hover anywhere between 50 to 58 exahash, representing about 25% of global hash rate from our pool members. Uh, these include some of the largest publicly traded miners and institutional miners within the space. We also recently founded, uh, launched our Foundry X team, which is our ASIC marketplace. Uh, we have launched that combined with Foundry Logistics and Foundry Deploy, cutting down and outsourcing all of the logistics and supply chain woes that we've seen over the past couple years from the main ma manufacturers like Bitmain or MicroBT, with whom we have a very close working relationship. We were also the first entity, period, to offer any sort of loans for equipment financing for ASICs backed solely by the ASICs themselves. So there was no lien against a building or you know, any sort of rev share on the actual tokens or, or coins themselves, in this case, Bitcoin. We also have our self-mining services uh, within our own facilities. Uh, these include Bitcoin and other coins as well. And uh, our, we have a collaboration with our sister company, Genesis Global Trading, OTC Lending, custody and derivatives uh, dealer. Uh, and it's one of our product differentiations, which we'll really see throughout uh, our team and throughout our service and sort of foundry ecosystem of services. Uh, this does include, for example, custodial Zen and staking of Zen from custody, should you choose. However, our proof of stake team is strictly non-custodial. Uh, Foundry Staking was launched in November of 2021, and I've worked informally on the team since our beginnings, and formally joined the team in June of this year, doing literally the exact same role with a new title. Uh, you know, we offer staking as a service with significant breadth and depth of the protocols that we support. So we support about 20 to 30 different protocols for both public validators, private validators, and white label validators. All of these are bespoke solutions for institutional demand, depending on what is required. As an example uh, you know, of our skin in the game, uh, you know, that's one of our differentiation uh, for our staking services. We stake all of Digital Currency Group's assets, and that's how we got started, and really make sure that you know, that reliability, that security is of utmost importance for both our clients' assets as well as our own. Uh, we operate the seventh largest near validator, 
and we almost solely host on our own bare metal servers uh, within tier four and tier five data centers with multi-regional redundancies built in. Uh, once again, we do have you know, a differentiation in our offerings in tandem with Genesis Trading. We can offer really unique solutions depending uh, using the lending desk from Genesis and lots of different options available through there to hedge any of the rewards perhaps from staking, uh, from mining activities, whatever that may be. And it really offers a great risk mitigation and yield optimization opportunity for companies with specific reporting requirements or risk management requirements. So, you know, I've kind of talked a little bit about, you know, us as a company, but like why, what makes us different, right? You know, staking has become commoditized in many ways and staking as a service has become commoditized. So what makes us different? Why choose Foundry? Uh, first off is, is our pri focus on privacy. Uh, from our risk management to our compliance teams uh, is some of our biggest uh, focuses. Uh, we've earned a SOC 2 Type 1 certification attested by Friedman LLP for our pool. We were the first Bitcoin mining pool to earn the SOC 2 certification. And we're also pursuing that for our staking service as well. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of security, we are in Tier 4, Tier 5 and a recent bare metal deployment into tier six data centers. Uh, I've seen lots of pictures. It's pretty incredible in terms of the uptime guarantees and percentages. Uh, it's based in Nevada, but we also have data centers in Europe, Chicago, Dallas, among many others, once again, for that multi-regional uh, redundancies. Uh, we offer strictly non-custodial staking. We do operate in the state of New York, and our sister company, Genesis, has a bit license. Should we be in any custodial or seen in a acting in a custodial manner, uh, we may be forced to pursue a bit license, and so we strictly offer non-custodial staking. Should you have a custodian that you are working with at an institutional level, uh, we have those partnerships and agreements with uh, custody providers such as Anchorage, BitGo, and many others. Our team itself works directly with certain protocol developers. And I spoke a little bit earlier about the bespoke solutions we can offer for institutional clients. One particular example that comes to mind is a significant around 10 figure size sole staker who, if you're familiar with the mechanics of Solana staking, there's a three day activation and cool down period when you are staking where that portion of your stake no longer earns rewards. We were able to work directly with the sole protocol developers in order to identify and use a little known CLI command that allowed us to move the stake key over to a new server with the approvals, of course, from our client. Uh, should they had to endure the three-day activation, this was several million dollars a notional worth of sole rewards that would have been lost each day for those three days. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, we do have skin in the game. We are staking our parent company's assets, DCG, as well as our own. For us, it is extremely important to continue to offer reliable and secure staking services, uh, both for our own assets as well as Digital Currency Group's assets. And finally, you know, as I, I alluded to many times, but we have a really close working relationship with Genesis uh, beyond the lending desk options, beyond the custody options, beyond yield optimization or risk mit mitigation options. Uh, that working relationship runs very, very deep. So, you know, why Foundry Staking and what have we been doing in the Horizon ecosystem? Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we deploy our own bare metal servers and have been uh, working in close collaboration with the Horizon Blockchain Foundation, Horizon Labs, and the Horizon team to build out a reliable, secure, and transparent staking infrastructure solution. Uh, these super and secure nodes we have a sort of optimization in terms of how we deploy into each of these different types of nodes and how we provision them. We've created bespoke JIRA and Nomad deployments 
uh, and implementations on the back end for autom automation in order to automate the compounding of any rewards earned, as well as significantly reduce all the manual approvals, transactions, and signings required with provisioning thousands and thousands of nodes at a time. Uh, these bare metal servers are provisioned as of once again uh, within our tier four and tier five data centers. And you know, we really like to think of you know, foundry staking and, and Horizon as support for this really exciting ecosystem. And once again, you know, DCG believes very heavily in Horizon's vision for the future. And therefore, you know, we are here as the infra infrastructure arm to support that. Great, so just in summary, you know, foundry staking you know, beyond uh, our other protocols for Horizon's ecosystem itself, we really build and maintain that secure, reliable core infrastructure for Horizon. Uh, those bare metal servers that we offer for super and secure nodes uh, are extremely close working relationship with the foundation, with the labs team, and uh, the labs founders. And you know, as I've alluded to many, many times, uh, DCG is heavily, heavily focused on ensuring that this ecosystem thrives, and we are here to build the foundations and infrastructure to make sure that that is in place to thrive in the future. Anyway, thank you, and I'd like to open it up to any questions. And hello. Uh, so like, if, for those that are building on the protocol, if we decided to maybe like run a node or, or start one up ourselves, are you offering that service, or is it only to the foundation um, or uh, Horizon Labs? Mm -hmm. We're always open to the discussions themselves. You know, we are, you know, very institutional focused, but in terms of, you know, maintaining that contact and working relationship, you know, as you guys grow, we're willing to grow with you, depending on where that vision sort of is for, you know, a side chain or any other project that's being built. So it's certainly an ongoing and evolving relationship and conversation that we're more than willing to have. Hello. So there's actually a lot of nuance to any of the Grayscale Trusts. Uh, none of the Grayscale Trust funds are actually eligible to be staked as part of their trust uh, documents, essentially. So uh, none of the Grayscale, uh, at least to my knowledge, none of the Grayscale Trust products uh, are being staked by Foundry. That's correct. Um, I feel like there's a follow-up. Yeah, another follow-up. <laughs> I'm just thinking through it. Here. Of course. You said that those nodes are running in multiple centers. I mean, how are you accomplishing the uh, one individual secure node running in multiple places? So, you know, I think this is more that depending on where we have the server itself and rack space, I, I will say we don't run just one node. Uh, our deployments would be in the hundreds at a time. So, so you're just distributing different nodes across different servers? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I really wish uh, my colleague Tiago, he has had massive, massive issues with his connections and flights from Latin America. Uh, he's been on a flight, I'm pretty sure, since Friday. Uh, and yeah, for the camera, it is Monday. So, you know, he is our manager of staking and scaling solutions. He was actually uh, installing, I don't even know what the correct term is, but he was at the data center in Nevada on our recent deployment uh, and really installing everything, building that out. And I really wish that he could explain that a little bit more because that's certainly, you know, his skill and expertise. And I am not as experienced or qualified to you know, speak on his experiences. Uh, but uh, you know, I'll still be here to enjoy the rest of the event. Okay, and Sebastian. Um, you said that you are um, doing only non-custodial staking. So that, for me, that means you never have access to any private keys or um, any other access uh, mechanism for the clients. Then. Mm -hmm. So how, I imagine that, especially for bigger institutional clients, how, how do they actually deposit the funds into the staking mechanism? How, how does that work? So they have a, different risk requirements. And I'm going to speak in very general terms just to you know, protect the privacy of our clients. 
in general, they have requirements to actually be custodied uh, for their reporting requirements. It, it very generally. Some, I have heard of instances who are not at Foundry where it is strictly a bunch of ledgers, and that is a thing. However, now you have to think about the manual portion of, you know, if we're talking about Zen, for instance, for the private validator, or private nodes, rather, for, for Zen, you're needing to have a send transaction for the, the Zen send, the approval, and then the stake action itself. So you have three separate signing, approval, or transactions in there for hundreds of nodes. Uh, we have you know, those Jira Nomad deployments to automate all of this and also automate the rewards compounding as well. We have also built out in a few other languages, I just don't want to name them because it names the protocol, uh, but bash transactions as well for the exact same sort of, uh, exact same functionality. Thank you for asking. So I, I actually have a, so what kind of investment would you be looking at if you were wanting to deploy like 100 nodes? Uh, well, 100 nodes, so secure or super in uh, this case. Sure. So, I mean, you know, secure nodes are 42 Zen, so times, what, was that 100? Yeah. So 100, so it would be, what, uh, 4,200 Zen, so times, what, $20 roughly? That's what, like, 80? So, I mean, very generally, it depends on the protocol. Uh, we have publicly, privately publicly said, you know, somewhere around 5 to 10 million notional is, is really where we'll get ideally started, but you know, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, we are willing to open that conversation earlier to grow as you grow. It really just depends on both the protocol itself as well as you know, what appetite we may have on the engineering side to build out a deployment if we don't already have that available. Thank you. Mm -hmm. With that answer, are you referring to the amount of Zen stake? Notional value. Yeah, just in terms of, you know, when we are looking at engineering time in terms of opportunity cost, you know, are we now changing priorities in terms of our current roadmap and, you know, whatever 30, 100 day plans that we're looking at already, you know, how do we balance those costs uh, both internally as well as those opportunity costs? Of course, uh, With plenty of time. Getting back to how you're actually staking uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not as familiar with that, to be honest, and I feel like, you know, could you maybe expand upon that a little bit more? Um, originally, each node had to have its own stake address, but then uh, we put together being able to put all of the stake into one address mm -hmm. and supply A2 address. Oh, yeah. So, in general, we basically just prefer that you know, if you're looking to have a mix of secure and super nodes, that you just have one dedicated wallet for each of them. It makes the automation significantly easier. That's actually the only way that that works. Uh, so single address for each type of node, I guess, would maybe be the, the best way that I could answer that. So I guess, yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, you know, I think I'll let us off a little bit early. I think we've got a long day. Uh, once again, thank you so much for coming to my presentation. I really appreciate you know, all the questions, taking the time to listen, learn. You know, I really think having challenging questions is, is really amazing. It, you know, I don't know everything, but I'm more than willing to find out. And I can definitely follow up if anyone has additional questions if they'd like to come up. And I don't know at the time. You know, I, think, I think that's one of the best parts about this ecosystem is that we are forced to continuously learn. And I'm more than happy to find out for you, you know, if I can't get it done right away. Uh, I'll certainly bug Tiago whenever he arrives. Thank you very much. Thanks.